Peter, good to have you in the studio. Busy day ahead, very tragic as we were saying. Tragic does not even begin to uh, uh, understate what this is today. We have had many cries. Uh, uh, actually, the boss was giving me a stat that uh, more uh, Africans have died in the mines, that's of course South Africans, than World War I and World War II put together. Going forward, how do we move away from this being a statistic and actually do something about this? Good afternoon, Anna, to you and your uh, viewers. Look, I, I fully concur with you. If, you. if you bring all the numbers together in the history of the mining industry and you look at where we've stood and where we are now and the number of disasters that we experience, yes, uh, that statement is a correct statement and that's a good analysis comp and uh, comparison uh, that is used. The reality of the matter is that uh, the vast majority of people that die in the mining industry are unfortunately black Africans. Mm. Now, many people think that we're racializing this thing. It, it has nothing to do with racism. It has to do with the fact that the design of the mining industry, it's not coincidental. The design of the mining industry was dump all the black people into the mining industry. Unfortunately, we've inherited uh, that system and we continue to bear the brunt on a daily basis. These are the people who expose their lives, limbs and lungs to the brutality of this industry. But, but again, this uh, does come back to the history of uh, the mining sector as it is, not just for South Africa, but uh, does re refer to a Hugh Masekela song where mm. he does begin with an intro, there's a train coming from Namibia, mm. from the hinterlands mm. of uh, Congo. And one can argue against what you're saying that this is actually how, m away from the colonial times, this was just cheap labor, which was Africans, that black Africans that is, who actually came in. So. Isn't this actually what it was, cheap labor, and it's actually still happening? No, definitely, definitely, because it was cheap labor, but people who were inhumane, who were, who, who were not regarded as humans, because my white counterpart in the mining industry had the right to have his family with me. I was dumped in a single-sex hostel, and I would go to my family a year later after being locked up in a single-sex hostel. Um, there was no value attached to my family. That's the reality of it. But yes, that's where we've been. We've come a long way. There has been significant changes under the democratic dispensation. We're certainly not where we were, but we're definitely not where we want to be. Let's talk about that four kilometers uh, down there. Um, do we get the sense that uh, we are seeing uh, close to a, a BP, uh, British Petroleum, off the uh, Gulf of uh, New Mexico, where they were drilling in unprecedented uh, depths? Do we get the sense that more actually needs to be done in, in terms of reform towards how far can be uh, miners can actually be sent deep down there? Should we be seeing some reform? No, no, no. The, you must remember that uh, the debt plays a, a, a role in terms of the mining fatalities. But it is not the sole reason for the mining fatalities. There are mines that are equally deep or deeper which have mined very safely and have not killed the number of people. And the 2.2 on the Richter scale, 2.2 uh, is actually not it's that, that bad, it's yeah. not that high, uh, given the mining industry. Now we don't want to speculate uh, our suspicions for now. We'll wait until the in loco is done and then we'll take it from uh, there. P Peter, if, if we actually do know that uh, there are some uh, uh, companies, that uh, some mining companies that are having some best practices, they are drilling and uh, there are not that many fatalities, why isn't this being replicated for the leading, uh, well, one of the leading uh, gold producers on the continent? That's exactly where our argument resides as the National Union of Mine Workers. We, we, we liken the mining industry uh, and, and, and the seniors of the industry. We liken them to a school kid. You know, in grade A, I used to cover my book like this, <laughs> nobody must speak, and then I would write with yeah. my arm and my body covering what I've written down. Okay. That's exactly the same behavior that is displayed by the mining industry. If we share best practices, if we work as a united force, as a mining industry, we can be competitors, but if we share best practices in saving lives and not regard saving lives as a competitive edge, 
to another one, then certainly we could make a significant difference. Peter, uh, something that's very striking here is uh, reading the statement here from uh, uh, Sisibanya Stillwater uh, going on about uh, how there is going to be a query, a formal query on this particular front. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that on Saturday, mining did resume on, uh, at the uh, unaffected uh, Drinfontein mines. This is on Saturday the 5th. Now, what does this actually say? Is, is this collateral damage or is, is, is it rhetoric? Is it political rhetoric that uh, we are going to have a query? This speaks volumes uh, and, and coincides with what we have been calling for all along. The moral degeneration of a attaching value to human life, in particular black human life. You see, when you kill seven people, in one go, surely the most humane thing would be to say, let's stop all our operations, Until let's observe, mm. let's stop, observe, and intervene. And how do we intervene? Do we take a production loss? Because no amount of productivity can be compared to, to human, human life. life. True. So this speaks volumes and confirms what we have been saying, that the mining industry puts profits before people. Very, very sad, uh, Peter. Um, going forward, we do know that uh, there was actually a movement. If uh, a fatality does happen, you actually are supposed to mourn. Do we actually know what is uh, going to happen to the families? Do we know if any arrangements have been done? I'm very sure you are actually in, in, in touch with uh, some Well, of the I've just members. spoken to the mining house coordinator this morning. What is going to happen is that uh, on Thursday, there's a proposal that on Thursday, there be a memorial service, a full day of mourning. Uh, and we must uh, also highlight that this was something that was not given in Sibanya operations. You'll recall a couple of, uh, a month and a half ago, we took one by force uh, because we attach real value to human life. Uh, it is one of our co-workers who have died. It is not just an animal that has passed on. Even for an animal you observe, uh, and, and, and feel. So yes, there will be a full day of mourning in terms of the proposal. Uh, which proposal we're trying to amend a little bit, uh, but there will be a full day's mourning uh, during working hours.